Hey, in the last update of Hunt Showdown, which is patch 1.16, the devs have dramatically changed the way that we need to deal with bosses. Since there's a lot of new players coming to this game all the time, I thought I might be of some help and make a guide on how to deal with bosses in the most effective way possible. This also being my first guide type video, I would really appreciate if you could go to the comments, let me know what you thought about this and what I could improve in future videos if I make more of these. If you don't want to miss what I think is the most effective way of killing any boss in the game, stick around till the end. Also just a little plug here, I stream Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, 18pm CST on both Twitch and YouTube, so if you want to swing by and say hi, feel free to do so. I've also included some chapters into this in order to try and keep it somewhat organized. You can find these both on the timeline and in the description. So for anyone who might not be following patch notes or updates as closely as I am, here are some of the changes that the devs have made for update 1.16. They have decreased the spawn rate of world spawn melee weapons close to boss target layers and also reduce the damage that melee tools do to boss targets in general. For us this means we need to find new ways of dealing with bosses, since just straight up meleeing them takes way longer now. While some of the old tactics still work, although slower, and I will elaborate on this soon, there are more efficient ways to do it. Since there are so many ways of dispatching of bosses, I've grouped the different methods in order to try and keep this somewhat in order. Here are the categories I've come up with. General knowledge, melee weapons, guns and special ammo, tools and consumables. Let's begin on the left and start working to the right. Knowing bosses' immunities, weaknesses and weak spots is important for the most efficient way of dealing with them. I won't go into detail here too much because I think there's a lot of guides already and I might make one in the future myself, but when needed I will elaborate a little bit on it. A thing that is important to know is that there are hard spawns for melee weapons in many locations on the maps. A general tip is that you should make mental notes of where they are when you see them. Many times they can look like they're lodged into a wooden block or maybe a pitchfork stuck into a hay bale. They are always there, even on Scrapbeak's lair. While melee tools might not be the most efficient way anymore, if you use the right tool for the right boss, they can do the job somewhat quickly and if you don't have anything else available, it might help you in any given situation. Okay, now let's get into what you can actually bring to a match in order to deal with a boss. And the first category for that is melee weapons. But Lufo, you said they are so bad now. Well, yes and no, some of them are better than others. For example, the Bomb Lance is made to be a boss killer tool and it does huge melee damage and also comes with a harpoon as a backup to deal big explosive damage to bosses. This is especially useful for bosses like Scrapbeak that don't take a lot of rending damage and only respond to piercing or explosive damage. In my opinion, when you play the Bomb Lance, you should bring one thing of steel balls and then the other one with the standard harpoon. This will give you the most utility in order to deal with players that are outside of your melee range but close enough to shoot them with the steel balls. For bosses, the most effective way is to harpoon them and then while the harpoon is stuck in the boss, you walk up to them and swing at them with a bomb lance. If a harpoon is lodged into a boss target, it won't do any splash damage to you, so you're safe while standing next to the boss. Both melee and explosive damage have potential to deal huge damage to most bosses and thereby allow you to dispatch of the boss fast. In this update, also all melee weapons have become a small slot, except the bomb lance of course, which means that you now can bring a katana, baseball bat, saber, machete, railroad hammer or anything like that with any big slot weapon without requiring to have Quartermaster equipped. I think Katana, Baseball Bat and maybe Saber are the only valid choices here, uh, since they do good damage, but they're also kind of viable for PvP. While the Katana is a better choice than Saber, since it can be used with Martialist, the Baseball Bat can hold its own, simply because of its attack speed. It can be used to stagger the Assassin, and take most of his health off in one go, given you have a stamina shot going of course. Meanwhile using the katana with martialist can knock big chunks of health off of any boss. To conclude the melee weapons chapter, I would say while the bomb lance is the best out of all of these three, and the most efficient in dealing with any boss as far as melee tools go, it will ruin Scrapix drops and it leaves you with only having a secondary and the steel balls to fend off players. The bat can be great to deal damage to bosses, being the best for assassin, but the katana can deal with any boss in a great way, especially if you have martialist dealing huge chunks of damage and it's just a straight upgrade to the saber. Okay, this brings us to the next chapter, which is guns and special ammo. And when I say guns, I obviously mean things that can shoot, so crossbows and bows count here as well. In general, I would advise you to try to not use your valuable ammo on bosses, since they can tank a lot of shots and it also makes other players aware of your position, leaving you vulnerable in future fights, scrambling for more ammo. This being said, there are guns that have built-in melee attachments, such as the Talon, Trauma, Hatchet and Bayonet variants of various guns. 
since these count as guns and not melee tools, they have the potential to deal big damage to any boss. Note that it's important what type of damage a boss is vulnerable to. The Butcher being vulnerable to rending damage will not take as much damage from a trauma as for example from a Taloon or a Hatchet. If there's any gun that you really enjoy and there is a melee tool variant of it, feel free to try it out and bring it. It could just help you kill that boss that little bit faster. When talking about guns and boss killing, of course we need to talk about the Nitro. Hated by many, loved by some, undeniable a great boss killer, at least sometimes. I mean, you know, it's good against the spider and the assassin. It can kill them pretty quickly, but the butcher, for example, is not that easily killed with a nitro. It just eats too many bullets, leaving you without ammo for fighting players later. I would say the same logic applies to the nitro as to the bomb lance. Do you really want to bring a big slot weapon just to kill the boss? While it can excel in PvP, it's kinda hard to master. It has low ammo, even more so if you shoot a boss, and it's one of the most expensive things in the game. Not the best choice to kill bosses in my book. Again, for the sake of this video, I will group the bow, the crossbow and the hand crossbow in the same slot here, since they all kinda work in a similar way I would say. You shoot the boss, you pull the arrows, you repeat. It works well, not really great depending on the boss. Having a weapon with ammo that you can pick back up is good for pvp as well as for ai killing so i think it's a solid choice if i had to say which one of these three is the best i would say the hand crossbow definitely excels the most since you can have a lot of utility by bringing poison ammo or fire ammo as well also the hand crossbow being a small slot allowing you to bring a full length rifle for your main gun and the hand crossbow having such great utility both for killing bosses and also denying reses makes it a great choice for any situation and especially for dealing with bosses talking about poison we obviously need to consider special ammo on guns too, namely poison incendiary and penny shot. Here you need to observe that bleeding cannot be applied to bosses or AI in general, which means that dum dum and flechette is completely useless here. Poison ammo is great against any boss except the spider, but works best on assassin and scrapic since it's their weakness. All fire ammo melts the spider, both dragon breath and incendiary. While it's good against scrapic as well, it burns his dropped loot, so I wouldn't recommend it. The butcher, of course, is immune to fire. And lastly, we have penny shot. Penny shot is a great boss killing tool in general. I really recommend it with a Romero, where you bring one slot penny shots and the other one with buckshot. This allows you to kill the boss with penny shot and still have normal ammo that has more range and the ability to wall bang on players. In general, except for Romero with one slot penny shots. I would not recommend bringing special ammo just to kill bosses. There is just better choices that work better for PvP such as FMJ, high velocity and slugs. The little gain speed you get from bringing a certain special ammo but the downside in PvP is just not worth it to me. To conclude this category of guns and special ammo, I think the hand crossbow takes the cake. Its versatility and usefulness even in PvP but also the fast ability to kill any boss is just very useful. So bringing a hand crossbow with one poison bolt and one normal bolt is something that you can never go wrong with in any game. Alright, moving on to the category of tools. Tools were once the most used thing to kill bosses, but that's over now, or is it? While the classic throwing axe into Scrapbeak, pulling them out and knifing him in the face while doing that might be over and not working very well anymore, it can still be done, though I don't recommend it, because it just takes too long. But the Derringer Penny Shot is a good way of chunking some health off of a boss. You can get a boss down to around half HP with the four bullets the Penny Shot Derringer comes with without getting an armor box. If you get one, you might even be able to complete the boss completely with only the Penny Shot Derringer. While in theory this might work great, it also requires you to be somewhat close to the boss because the spread of the penny shot derringer is just too great. This leaves you open to get hit by bosses like Butcher and Scrapbeak, while the spider might just flat out avoid you the whole time by sitting on the roof and never coming down there. So yeah, this chapter is kind of short and sweet. The penny shot derringer is really the only tool that I would think is viable for dealing with bosses. Although it's not the best, it's just okay, and I don't think I would bring it to deal with a boss, but rather for other applications such as dealing with players that are chasing you or the likes. Last but not least, we come to the consumables, and I think this is what Crytek wanted to achieve with this change, which basically is they want you to bring consumables in order to deal with bosses, and I think that might be what most players will gravitate towards. Let's start off with the all-time classic, the sticky bomb. Throw it on the boss, and it does three quarters of its health in one hit. Just beware of this. Uh, oh, I Stop. Didn't oh, again, dude, that is the second time that happened to me, man. Oh, no, man. Oh, no, man. <laughs> oh, no, man. Oh, no, oh, no man. man. 
It can be hard to do this to the assassin, but it's definitely possible. There is two ways of doing it. You can either throw a fire on the ground, and then when the assassin builds itself up next to the fire, you throw the sticky bomb in there, blowing the assassin's health off. While this is kind of unreliable, a more reliable way of doing it is throwing it next to the assassin and either shooting it yourself or having your teammate shoot it, blowing it up and dealing damage to the assassin as well. While this technique might work, it is kind of unreliable, doesn't work every time, and it's kind of hard to pull off sometimes. Secondly, we of course have the poison bomb, which is in my opinion kind of a meme. I know there is some people who actually bring it in order to deal with assassin, but here's my opinion on it. Obviously, it doesn't work on the spider, since the spider is immune to poison. It works best on assassin and scrap beak, because as mentioned before, poison is their weakness. While the butcher takes damage from the poison bomb, it's not that much, and I think it's way too slow to actually be viable. Since butcher and scrap beak both keep moving at you while they're in the poison and don't get staggered like the assassin, you need to be kiting them through the poison cloud in order to deal damage on a constant basis. But again, I think this takes too much time. Using two consumable slots, namely the poison bomb itself and the antidote shot, is just too much of an investment to be worth it. And the hand crossbows poison bolts are just better. You have more of them, you can shoot them at the boss dealing damage with the impact, it just works better. So I wouldn't recommend bringing a poison bomb and an antidote shot just to deal with bosses. And lastly, we come to the big dynamite bundle, which is kind of a surprise to a lot of people. But in my opinion, this is the best way to deal with all of the bosses. The technique is kind of simple. You just go into the boss lair, you wait for the boss to start charging at you, and you throw the dynamite bundle at your own feet, shooting it as soon as you can. This will instantly kill you and the boss, then allowing your teammate to rest you or self resting with Necro and banishing the boss instantaneously. You don't need to care about any weakness, no immunity, there is no fuss. It works every time, it one-shots, it's the fastest method in the game. Although this consumable is very expensive, but I think it's worth 100% of the price. By the way, Crytek have also changed the loot tables for consumable boxes and hunter loot, so you can actually loot this thing from people and loot boxes now. So, to wrap all of this up into a kind of neat package here, I have concluded the best choice from every category, and it is the katana, the hand crossbow, penny shot derringer, and the big dynamite bundle. Out of these four, I would consider them all worthwhile for boss killing, though I think the derringer is on the weaker side of things. I also think the sticky bomb is worthwhile pick, even though the big dynamite is just flat out better. In the end, dealing with a boss is a thing that can happen under a plethora of conditions, and I think the big dynamite bundle is just the best tool to do it fast and efficiently without any hassle and really thinking about it. It also doesn't really impact your loadout too much. If you want something that has more of an impact on your loadout and can also be used for PvP in some capacity, I would definitely recommend the hand crossbow and the katana. The hand crossbow of course giving you a lot of utility with the poison being able to deny reses and entry into boss layers and still being able to down players at a longer range with a normal bolt. The katana is insane with martialist and also fun to use against players can work well even against shotguns if you pull it off right, and of course works great against any boss. But to conclude again, the big dynamite bundle, in my opinion, is definitely the best boss killer in the whole game. What are you guys' thoughts about this? Is there anything I missed or anything you don't really agree with? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this and you learned something new, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and your attention, and I'll see you next time. Bye.